self-professional and do the work that you're hired to do. Sure. So at that point, I realized, you know what? I need some education, you know? So um, that's when I started uh, um, going around New York, going to, going to different um, film academies, like the New York Film Academies, different acting schools in order to, to like hone my craft in order to make myself more marketable to the point where I am not um, nervous if I were to go into an audition from that point on. Sure. So, so oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Um, go ahead. So you, you, so you, you audition for your first role now. And, and I take it the, the first acting job you had was the one where you were describing Chris Allen living close to you in Philadelphia, correct? Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what was the yeah, first one then, that you actually went out and auditioned for? And he said, Brian, you are our dude. Oh, where I actually posted job? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. That was, let's see, law. It was called Law Abiding Citizen with Jamie Foxx and F. Gary Gray was the um, director. And uh, um, it was a big budget film. Um, the protagonist was um, a guy by the name of um, Gerard Butler, who is very, very famous as well as Jamie Foxx. So I was brought in to meet with F. Gary Gray. And uh, he said, Brian, uh, will you be available to shoot in Philadelphia for um, two months? I said, sure. I, I'm sure I could do that. So he uh, gave me a script. He's like, look, um, will you cut your hair? And at that point, I'm like, look, I don't have any hair, so there's no hair, hair for me to cut. So then he uh, wanted me to read a few lines, and, and they said, like, and then he did. He just looked at me for, for a certain period of time, looked me up and down. He, he looked at me and was like, well, you seem like you're a bodyguard sort of person, so you will be... Jamie Foxx's bodyguard throughout the entire movie. And that was it. I mean, um, that was all of the audition that he needed. Okay. And I was on that set for like a, for like two months. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, there's another guy who they wanted to use, but he said that he would not cut his hair. Oh, gotcha. And after I graduated from California, he said, no, well, then since you won't cut your hair, then I won't need you. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's just uh, so like so like that was my first real big, big budget Hollywood movie audition nice. that I auditioned for. So you know, for some of our folks who are listening, who are considering the the acting business, uh, talk to us a little bit about rejection because I hear about that, and you hear actors come on on various shows and they talk about that whole process. Do you remember? your first rejection and do you remember one that really sticks in your craw? It's like, are you kidding me? Hmm. Well, I, well actually like, look, I can go back to my last rejection. I was up for a very popular show on ABC that's still filming. And I had the audition about five days ago. Uh-huh. Normally uh, what happens is that, if you go to audition, you will know within 24 hours if you had booked that role. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, I didn't get that role. So as an actor, you will go out on, let's say, if you're lucky, 10,000 auditions. Okay. 10,000. Okay. Um, if you're lucky, through, throughout the course of, of your acting life. Sure. If you book... 20 of them, 30 of them, 100 of them, then you're a great actor because wow. it's just a numbers game. And, uh, I mean, you will have to deal with rejection because a lot of it comes down to things that you can't control, whether you're, you're too short, whether you're too too tall, whether you were too short in relation to the main actor, whether you overshadowed the main actor, whether you overshadowed the person with whom that uh, you'll be in a scene. Uh whether you remind the producer of an ex-boyfriend, good or bad. Wow. Just, Are you there, serious? There's so many. 
Wow. Yes, there are so many subjective things that you have no control over that go into the decision making process of becoming an actor to a booked actor for a particular series or, or television show or, or film that you just can't even worry about that anymore because you have to worry about, okay, what can you control? You can control your lines, how you say your lines, and that's it. That's the only thing that you can tr control. Everything else is so much out of, out of your control. Then you have to realize that, like, look, I gave a good performance and just move on. You will get rejected 99.9% .9 of the time as an actor. You just have to live with it. Sure, sure. Well, let me ask you this. Have you, have you ever booked a job and you got on the set and you were disappointed by the the level of energy or professionalism. I, I don't want you to name the set because I don't want you to burn any bridges. But, <laughs> but have you ever been on one? It's like, wow, I thought this was going to be a little more energetic or this was going to be a little more professional than what I'm seeing here. This is nonsense. Well, actually, honestly, everything that, that, that I go for, go out for in a book is a major television show or a major film. Okay. So it's just it's just a different league. It's just, it's, it's it's a different energy. I mean, we are all professionals, mm -hmm. and when I and when I book a television show, everything moves so quickly. Everything moves sure. at, at at the speed of light. Not the speed of sound, but the speed of, speed of light because you only have so much time, and time is money that mm -hmm. you can shoot a that you can shoot a scene, and then. When you hit the scene, then you move on to the next scene. Mm -hmm. And the production company has gotten, gotten to such a fine form of such an art that like, okay, this scene is going to be 18 minutes. It's, we're going to shoot it for 12 minutes. Therefore, it's going to cost us X amount of dollars. They've got sure. it down to a science where, whereby everything runs as smoothly as possible. So... Um, Honestly, just coming back to your question, every time that I book a, a television show, uh, be it on cable or network or when I book a film, whether it's a big budget or a indie or, or an indie, everyone is a professional and everyone knows what their job is. And I've never been disappointed. Well, that, that's great. So in most professions, people have someone that kind of guides them along the way who have been some of your mentors along your journey. Oh, wow. Um, from a teaching perspective, uh, let's see. I would say Bill Esper. Um, he has a studio here in New York. Uh, I completed his two years professional acting program. Mm -hmm. uh, he is the or, I'm sorry, he was the uh, consummate expert in the Meisner technique. Uh, he passed on um, about like, 10 months ago, uh, but, but, but his studio still lives on. I mean, he, he, he was my, he's my acting guru, as, as well as uh, the teachers that are there, such as a uh, Let's see. I mean, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just going through that studio, um, and uh, just living the life of an actor or learning the craft of acting. That is really what, what really uh, pushed me forward. And those are my my real mentors. And uh, um, when you come down to it, you have to know what your craft is. You have to know. You have to be disciplined enough to know, okay, this guy is an expert. Um, if you're willing to do the hard work, then this person can teach you how to be an actor. Because being an actor is different from from doing pretty much anything else. But sure. it's similar, but it's different. Sure. Um, being, uh, um, being an actor, you, you, you have to know how to breathe life into a character. You have to be able to make things that are not real, real. And you have to pretty much um, be able to 
bring words on a paper to life. And um, you have uh, the uh, teachers at, at the actors at at the um, um, at the uh, William um, at the uh, William Master Studio, or just mm -hmm. phenomenal. They're second to none. And uh, those are the ones who I really look forward to. The, they're the ones who I look up to. Those are the ones who I I cherish, and they are the ones who really have allowed me to go from zero to 100. Sure. Now, out of the – and I know you've been on a lot of sets over the years. Um, can you point to any particular actor or actress that has sort of taken you under their wing and said, hey, Brian, you know – try this or try that, or I like the way you did this, or you might want to do a little more of this. That is really something that really stood out in your mind. Said, wow, you know, he really helped me out. And ever since then I've used that and it's really worked well for me. Well, honestly, okay. I can give you a very good example of this. Okay. Um, I was on a set of green book and uh, this is the first day of filming. And the um after i came out of hair and makeup uh um, i had my uh, my making county a uh, police uniform on and i go to set i was actually to set and i meet beagle mortensen okay peter Farrelly then introduced me to beagle mortensen he's like hi i'm beagle mortensen and i looked at him i'm like look i know who you are <laughs> And um, I'm a big fan, basically. So then we get into to shooting the, uh, the, uh, the uh, scene in Green Book. And um, um, and Mahershala Ali is in the background. Now, I know Mahershala Ali because we worked on House of Cards together in 2014, 2015, mm -hmm. along with Kevin Spacey. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were trying to get through this scene whereby... Mahershala Ali's character was caught in a very compromising uh, position at mm -hmm. a local YMCA back in 1964. And me being the only African-American cop on the force of the Macon County uh, Police Department at the time, I was, he said, look, you were, you were conflicted. You're trying to figure out, okay, well, you want to impress your boss who was right next to you. And we were, we were working through the scene. He broke it down with us along with the um, director, Peter Farley. And we were able to figure out, okay, well, how should we play this? What should my direction be? Where should I look? How should I look? And we just um, went through it. We shot it. And it's one thing to be uh, taught by another actor or to be helped along by another actor. But I was helped out by an Academy Award winner, by, and by uh, who's Mahershala Ali, by an Academy Award nominee, Viggo Mortensen, and by a, a director who had won numerous awards for all of his films, Peter Farrelly. So that just that just shows me that that at the end of the day, it comes down to getting the finished product, sure. the finished product out there, and uh, I mean just, just taking the advice that sure. that all of them were able to instill upon me. It's just it really is just refreshing, and it just um, allows me to explore various aspects of my craft, sure, even further. Wow, that that's great. And, and you know, one other question I wanted to ask you, uh, you, you know, one of the things that always comes up and, and you alluded to it earlier when we were talking about the coronavirus piece is, you know, when you see these scenes, you know, the, you know, the hot, hot, smoking, hot love scene, you know, they're just, they're going mm -hmm. at it. They're falling over the couch. They roll out into the driveway, run back in the house and, <laughs> you know, just, they're just getting, yeah. getting busy from mm -hmm. an actor's perspective. Um, how do they choreograph that? Um, how do you do if you if you don't have chemistry with the other person? How does that work? Can you kind of can you kind of peel that onion back a little bit? Because I know people always wonder about that. Sure. Um, 
over the past